Welcome to a new Waterwave TV interview. I got the one and only JTC Beats in the building. You know it. Stuff on them. You know what I mean? Got the chain on. I see it. You know, you know it. it. Mr. Step on them. Mr. Balenciaga defeat. You know Just it. had to step on them. Back in here, round two. We better. You're in a small. You're in a small percentage of people in this world that have two Waterwave interviews now. I'm honored. Blessed to be here, man. I know. I'm trying to think. That I, don't, I don't. There's definitely a few, but there's not many. Um, but we got you got a lot of catching up to do. You've changed a lot. You've grown a lot. You've adapted a lot. It's been a crazy year. I mean, but for the people that don't know you, I feel like you got a cool story to tell that we definitely got to touch on. Yeah, definitely. From how you got to where you are today. Um, but were were you born and raised in Minnesota? Were you yeah. always here? Yeah, I'm from here. Okay. I, I went to Stillwater. Okay. Graduated from Stillwater. What was high school life like? High school, I really just didn't care about anything but partying mm -hmm. and like doing music like. When I, I feel like Stillwater is probably a cool party area too for you know high school or yeah no it you was know. fun like I grew up in like a trailer park and stuff so we did, it was like um, different environment than like a lot of the kids like that went to Stillwater okay you know like there was a lot of rich kids and shit like that we just like were like fuck it we're just gonna go get thirty six beers and chug them and that's so party <laughs> I mean that's I mean shit he, whatever happens in high school stays in high school <laughs> no, I, I never. Uh, how did you get, so did the partying ever lead to you in the creative space or were you making beats or doing any type of music stuff in high school? Like, were you in band, choir, anything like, like that? I, I did like, uh, I played the clarinet in like fifth or sixth grade. Then I started playing the drums a little bit. Like, I, um, I got a twin brother for people that didn't know that. I didn't know that even. Yeah. Have I, I seen Metal? Yeah, probably. Wow. Maybe well, I, I met him once. I got an identical twin. He doesn't do music or anything like that, but when we were younger and stuff, like we obviously tried, pretty much did everything together. Mm -hmm. So like, I, I played the clarinet in like elementary school band, and he played uh, the tuba. Wow. And uh, after that, pretty much, I got to like middle school and I was like, I'm not gonna be in the band no more, you know, I'm not trying to be that kid. But uh, so I like got a drum set somehow. My dad bought me a drum set, my, my brother got a guitar. We were like gonna start trying to be a band or That's whatever. like every parent's worst nightmare, I feel yeah. like, is like giving the kid the drum set in the basement and they're just loud all day. But yeah, not no. nightmare as in like you they found yeah, a passion, just but loud just loud like, noise, you know, like unless you really take it serious type yeah, thing. Yeah, no, I mean really what it was was like I what really wanted me to get a drum set, you remember the game like rock band, guitar hero, oh, like yeah. that kind of shit, like I just was always the drummer. I was the designated drummer. Hey, I think that's around the time I really wanted a guitar too. Was when I was playing that stuff like on the Wii, like Guitar Hero and I whatnot. Like even like before the Wii, maybe. Grade or something like yeah, that. there's a picture of me as a little kid, like with I wanted an electric guitar so bad. But my parents were like, "I'm like so young, like buying me an electric guitar. It's expensive as hell." So I got like a fake like toy one. I was like so excited to have oh, yeah. it, and it was like a picture of, yeah, from like my birthday or something. I got but, lucky. Yeah, I got lucky. Hero. My dad got me a drum set and got my brother a guitar and an amp, so we just just jam out. And Shout stuff. out Guitar Hero for. Inspiring the youth for yeah. real. Who would have thought? Who would have thought video games would be inspirational, man? <laughs> but then, yeah, that's like kind of where like I learned like really like the like the rhythm part of shit mm -hmm. and like uh, how to like the hand-eye coordination and rhythm part. So like I was like able to play. I could probably still to this day go play like every song I expert on the drums. Like. Oh wow, one of those guys. Yeah. I know there's a, you know Student One? Yeah. He's a professional guitar hero player. I've seen, I've seen him on TikTok. Once. Yeah, he's like a real pro. Maybe you guys got to do a competition together, rock band or something. I'm not that good, but, <laughs> but I'm all right. Might have to make a video out of that one day. Um, but when did you, so when did you pick up like creating beats or did you rap first? Or, like, Shortly after that. So like okay. I started playing the drums a little bit and I like taught myself how to play the drums. I know, like, and um yeah, my family would always like be like, listen to it, gather around, everybody listen to him. He's actually like really good. Mm -hmm. But like all my beats wasn't like sounding like, I wanted to be like a metal band back then, like double pedals and mm -hmm. you know, saying going crazy and shit. And uh, the kit that I had was like more like a hip hop sounding drum kit. So like all the beats that I was doing, I sounded kind of like some hip hop shit. And like, I was like, honestly, I kind of like rap music more than metal music, anyways. And really, I had a friend that like. I had a friend in school that, like, was rapping, mm -hmm. kind of, not, like, rapping, but it was, like, we were in, like, fucking seventh grade or something like that. He was just freestyling. What year is this, approximately, I guess, just for a time table? Probably, like, 20... Damn, what year was it? 2010, maybe? Okay. Yeah, about 2010. Okay. 2009, 2010 era. Okay. Then. And, uh... 
he was just like freestyling and I was just like fuck it bro I don't know I think we just got like I started smoking the weed around that time too and I think we were just like high one day and like fuck it bro I'm gonna make a beat mm -hmm. and you're gonna rap to it damn 2010 making beats yeah so did he hop and he did he like hop on the song he recorded it like engineered it at the I time mean, or like did he just freestyle me, like, it took on me it? a couple months to make a beat that was good enough to rap on okay like before i could be like no nah. i was like no nah, i'm not even gonna i'll did, show y'all but no no we, we good now so when you finally made that beat I, did had to, he, I had to get a microphone and stuff like that too yeah. so i had to like save up like a birthday present money or something like that yeah. to be able to go buy back then stuff. it wasn't as easy to just like get some studio time either no. i don't think and then actually so after I started making beats and stuff a little bit, uh, like a year or something around, probably a year in, like right, I don't know why, but the, the old coffee shop, it used to be a coffee shop, like there was like a gas station and a coffee shop in the same building, like right up the street, like right by where I grew up. And the coffee shop closed down and turned into a studio. For some reason, mm. one of the dudes that lived in the trailer park like bought it and like, um, opened it into a studio and whatever and then I went it was like 25 bucks an hour back then and I was probably like 14 when I went and booked my first session there wow and I like recorded my first song there like me rapping like that because mm. I was like I'm like I'm not gonna pay for somebody else to rap first yeah 14. Come hop on your beat so I paid for like a three-hour session rapped they made my first song and I didn't like the way that the dude mixed it I went back for like another like two sessions I think and like still didn't like any of the mixes. Mm -hmm. Made dude get me my files and shit. And I'm like, I don't know what I'm doing. Like I just made him get my files and I like put them into Fruity Loops and started like tweaking it and that's like how I learned how to engineer. Damn. It's like then, real self taught. Were you using YouTube or anything or just straight? A little just bit, tweaking? like you know, like Cause I don't know like back then of how much, you know, content there is on YouTube because nowadays there's it was a little everything. Bit. I'll be real, this is how I really learned how to like make a beat back because there wasn't a lot of content back then. People mm -hmm. used to like I didn't know how to like structure the beats or like even like really even like cause you gotta train your ears to like learn like somebody who's like, I'm gonna make a beat's not gonna hear every sound in the beat versus mm -hmm. like me now, fifteen years in, I can hear every sound in every beat like and i can't even like listen to it normally and appreciate it because i'm just like listening for like what's this what's this what's this yeah so it's like yeah no pretty much listening differently and yeah i don't know it's just it's what, so when did you realize i guess that you could um or when did you i guess like realize you're getting good at it and start trying to make it a business um because i feel like i mean about 16 Okay. 16. So you were like the guy in high school people would go to at some point? Or? Yeah. Uh, but I would start, I was pretty much like, back because like back shit in middle school, I was like the only one doing it. Mm -hmm. People would like make fun of me for making beats and shit because they're like, oh, like why are you, you're making beats? Like what mm -hmm. a weirdo. Like, yeah, because I was so, like, people, weird people weren't doing that me. shit back then. Yeah, you know, so it's like, what a weird thing to do. And um, that shit was cool, whatever. People talked about Did you know, shit. did you like know early on, like, like I, I could be a really like if I was like a really big producer one day I could make a lot of money like yeah. when you're younger like it was like my inspiration who like really got me like into making beats like where I was like I want to start doing this for real easy it was like it was around the time that like Hard in the Paint Waka Flocka came out mm -hmm. Lex Luger that kind of like sound the super trap shit where it turned from like Gucci Mane Jeezy trap to like crazy just hype trap mm -hmm. I was like this shit is awesome like you know like I got to I gotta figure out how to make it, and then there was video, that's when these videos kind of started coming out, beat breakdowns yeah. and shit like that. You're like, damn, that's how easy it is. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm gonna try that, and then it just a lot of work, just trying that shit, just keep trying shit, trying new shit, mm -hmm. always trying to learn every day. Do you remember what laptop or computer you used to make your first beat? It was like a three hundred dollar Toshiba laptop i remember the specs that's about it well what's the details <laughs> it's a uh intel i3 processor with four gigs of ram wow and i think like maybe 256 gigabytes of storage what is it how is that compared to what you got right now um i got it i mean i'm about to get a new macbook soon but i got a 2019 macbook that's pretty low, like pretty upgraded mm -hmm. i feel like how how important is the how important is the com is like the computer you're recording on or like the pro or like the platform you're using compared to just like just knowing what you're doing with what you got it depends on 
I'd say like the level you're at. Yeah. Because like somebody who's like... Like could say, you hop back on that first laptop you ever used right now and make the same quality stuff you could with what you have right now? Yeah. You think you... Yeah. So like... Probably like close. It would probably be a little bit more of a process just mm -hmm. because it would run slow. I probably wouldn't be able to put as many plugins on. Yeah. Like it, like something that's not compatible or something. Yeah. Some new age tech. I mean shit, back when I started shit, um, this is like... I was I was on FL for the first five years. Mm -hmm. I used Freeloops because it was on Windows. I was like the Windows program or whatever. And then as soon as I finished high school, I got a Mac. That was my graduation present. I got nice. a MacBook. That's what I I got I got a uh, MacBook too. The less a laptop, right? The MacBook. Yeah. yeah, that's what I got too. Right my twin I got a car. I got a MacBook. Damn. And I just made my twin bring me to the studio. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Saved up to buy my own car. Yeah. With my MacBook. Made your money off the MacBook. Yeah, yeah that's a, that's a that's a song. Made my money off a of MacBook. That's okay. a bar right there. That's a song title. I don't know. <laughs> that's something. But yeah, no, that that pretty much in the end, I was just like, okay, this is easy. As soon as I finished, like, I was doing the shit in school, but you know, I just had like I was at the crib, just doing the shit at the crib, and then mm -hmm. like, as soon as I, it was like my senior year, I met Tay, and he brought me in, like to the Red Sea mm. for like a video shoot. I shot his vi first video, and. I feel like this is a common thing with engineers, producers, that they're also cameramen. I mean, I've been a cameraman since I was like six years old, seven years old. Like, Jeez. Like, as soon as I could get a can on a camera, I was like trying to make videos. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's definitely like some lost files of me as a kid on YouTube, like doing Damn. crazy shit. I actually, I was on YouTube when I was in like, yeah, fourth grade or some crazy shit. As soon like, just, as I, was I don't on even YouTube know. What, like, but the account is the first year was out. Yeah, I don't, I, so early days. I don't even know how we I got was, the video on I was really on tech savvy there. as a kid. Like my, yeah. my parents said I was like playing like solitaire and shit, like as like two year old and shit. Like. I remember getting on my dad's like online poker site and like playing with his money on there, like while he was asleep, like like playing tournaments and shit. Like, what the fuck am I? How am I? How do I even know what I'm doing <laughs> with that? That's good. But no, so you met Tay your senior year. That's the first time you were at the Red Sea, or no? Yes, that was the first time I came to the Red Sea, and I had like a few months left before I graduated. Damn, and, and you're like, shooting, yeah. I grad and I was still working like after school and shit. Like I would still go up to the studio and shit and work until I had to be at home, you know, until mm -hmm. my curfew, basically, you know. And um, yeah, they AK wasn't fucking with me at all. There originally he wasn't. No, for like the first like six months he did not really fuck with me. First time he met me though, like I, I to his t defense, like I was just like hooked up at the studio recording. Schizo, KP Schizo, mm. shout out Schizo. This is like your senior year of high school? Yeah, it's me and Schizo went to high school together. And you're recording at the Red Sea? Yeah, and this is like our first time recording going after the video shoot. Like I shot the video and then like the next day we came back after school and I was like, oh, let's work. Because Tay was like, oh, it's my dad's studio or whatever. Mm -hmm. Tay and Schizo were going to do a song. I'm recording Schizo and AK come in and started yelling at us, who the fuck is this in my studio? Get the fuck off my shit. I start tweeting, I'm my bad shit. I thought, I thought everything good. So I started bringing my own equipment, and we were mm. just working in the other room. So, like, nobody could say shit to me. Like, you know, I'm not touching none of your shit, bro. Like, mm. I'm here to work with your son. And then, like, everybody who was around kind of at that time left. Like, like Bobby, Frankie Bash, LaRon. Tech was kind of, I think, I don't remember if Tech was around. Shit like that. Everybody, like, that, that's kind of, that crowd or whatever, they all left around this time within the first year of me coming around okay and then like after that point like AK kind of really had no choice what to fuck me it's like I was the last <laughs> man standing and you've been like the main guy over there for yeah. since yeah. really yeah. right yeah pretty so much. what year was that then Seen, like the year after you graduated so. I, I graduated in 2016 but I graduated a little bit late okay so yeah around like oh shit I was supposed to be 2015 I'm like dropping phones and the drinks yeah that's I just wasn't good at homework yeah, I, I just didn't do it. Yeah, I, was, I, feel like that. I, said, I was worried about partying in high school. I hated homework. So you've been there for what has it been like seven years then now? Eight, almost eight years. Think about. I mean, that was this was twenty fifteen when when I met when I first started going over there. So it's been it's been a minute. Yeah, what, eight years. Yeah, going on nine almost. I know because I even I heard of you when I met um, Reese and Tez and Darius and all them the first time. Mm -hmm. At the time, well, Jack Boy Velone, Tezzy Ban wait, I don't even, what was it? I don't it was know. Tezzy Bands. Was, his, was that his rap name? Yeah. Was it Tezzy Bands and, I don't even remember what Darius's rap name was, but 
I don't even know. It might have just been Darius. They had a group name. I it was a JTN. Yeah. And just the numbers. Yeah, um, that was funny. Or whatever. And that's how I think I even heard of the Red Sea slash heard of you. At least that's what I thought. Like, so that's that's how I thought I heard of you for the first time, or like heard your work for the first time. Mm -hmm. But come that to was early on too. Yeah, come to find out, you actually. I'm pretty sure you actually recorded the song for the people I shot the first my first ever music video MTE. Oh yeah. K Coffee, Shump, yeah, and Malcolm. Yeah, that's the guy. MTE. That was that's funny. the first video ever uploaded to the Waterwave TV YouTube channel. That's and funny. You so. engineered their song music, yeah. right, for that yeah. song, and I think a few other songs. A lot of the songs they used to come out there. Out I drive up like from Mankato like every month or something like that once yeah. a month and, get and it's crazy because like at the time I didn't even know like what I was doing with like my camera and like shooting music videos and stuff like like the page wasn't even called Waterwave TV yet it was just like a placeholder to drop the music video and then like the next video was introducing Waterwave TV because I just kind of clicked in my head like right after that like I should do something for real like with it but yeah come to find out you're you engineer his shit and then you engineered you know JTN stuff and and then that's kind of like how I got introduced to like Tay and you guys would mm -hmm. like come over there and into, into their house in River Falls to um party or shoot yeah. music videos and shit and that's where I went to college yeah. is River Falls and we would always hang out at the PC and stuff so yeah. it's like real small world shit like like how it's just like how it's weird how it all came how together like got... how did you like the song you engineered it was the first ever music video I shot in a whole different city you have no reason to even know exactly. who I am and then all of a sudden like you're actually doing work with people that I'm bu doing business with, like yeah. partners with and shit. And it's just like, it's a bit really all small world shit. But that also shows that you've worked with like a lot of people from Minnesota. Mm -hmm. Like the yeah, fact I, that you've covered it, like the whole state. I made it sure, like a, uh, like a for sure thing to myself. I always tell myself like, like I want to work with a lot of people just to like experience, like, uh, like discover people. Like, you know, I like meeting new artists and stuff. And, you know, not everybody's good. Not everybody's great amazing not everybody's trash but you got to experience different sounds whatever so like i don't know I, me working with some of the lesser artists like like skilled artists i'm not going to say like lesser like as like your music sucks but you're lesser skilled like it's a harder process for you to make a song mm -hmm. than it is for somebody who's advanced who takes they can 20 just hop minutes in and, and spit a bar and yeah you know make like, a song quick, yeah. like i had to learn how to be able to get people from that point to the other point yeah that's like my job what i feel like as an engineer is getting you comfortable enough to get that professional result and that's like why like i don't know back in the day when i was doing sessions for mte and then i was charging like 30 bucks an hour dude, mm -hmm. like and and splitting the money with the owner of the studio like mm -hmm. so it's like i'm making 15 dollars an hour back then and mm -hmm. compared to where i'm at now it's just like I don't know, like, yeah, I mean, now you, you know, all the work you've put in, you know, it increases the value for you. Or even if it take, it might take you less time to mix it, but it's, oh, yeah. it only takes you less time to mix it because of all the put all many hours you've put 10, in. Yeah, so they're not paying for that session; yeah. they're paying for the the, the years of exactly. the years it took for you to get to that session. Plus the money that I've saved up to buy new equipment. And yeah, stuff yeah, because like that's that. I think that's I mean, one ROI. That's one big thing I think artists may for forget about or not think about when booking studio session time. It's not even just like the amount of time you're there. It's the equipment that you're using. It's like the experience of the person you're working with. Like, and especially if, um, if, it, if, if you want them to be mixing and mastering mm -hmm. it after or whatever, like yeah, no. there's a lot of factors that go into why studio time costs a certain amount of dollars. And it's like, you know, you can find cheap studio time someplace, you can find expensive studio time other places. That's, and there's reasons why. Exactly. Yeah. I just know predominantly you get what you pay for. Exactly. I think that's a, yeah, that's fair to say. But over the years that you've been at the Red Sea, do you have some like favorite moments? I know we could we could talk for like probably 10, 20 hours about just like everything that favorite you've ever moments. done at the at Red at the, Sea. At the Red Sea or at the studio? Let's say the studio, because I know, well, I guess the Red Sea is, it's not called, it's called Trap City Studios. Yeah. I just know it as, that's, it, did, it used to just be referred as to the Red Sea like a while ago, I feel like, right? Or is I mean, that just the just venue the below area. it? It's just yeah. the area, everybody just knows that that's the Red Sea, so it's just like, oh, Pulp's Red Sea. Yeah, because that's how I was introduced to it as, but it, it's actually the Trap City Studios. Trap City so do you have like any favorite like Trap City Studios memories over the years? Over the years? Mm -hmm. I mean, there's been so many like, it's it's kind of like a everyday like joke fest over there like you know what I'm saying like everybody's always clowning mm -hmm. all the time. Whenever I go over there, it's good vibes. Yeah, it's always it's always good vibes, and then like everybody's also professional too. So it's like 
when I got a session or something like that, everybody respects the fact, like, don't, don't be all in my session and be mm -hmm. quiet and go sit in another room if I got a session or something like that. And, but, like, yeah, no, it's, it's hard to think, man. I know one big moment that one. I can at least, like, bring up to help jog memory is, like, I guess uh, when, like, Boozy came to town, they record, like, he did, they did the feature and everything, like, in the studio, right? Yeah. You mix and mastered it. Yeah, no, Boosie, when Boosie came in, he did two features, so it was, like, random as hell. Like, I just got it. We were having, like, low-key, we were having a, we had a show, and then we were having, like, a little after party at the studio. I should have done now, but we, um, all of a sudden I get a phone call, like, hey, I'm about to bring Boosie up there. I go tell, like, hey, hey, Boosie on the way. He shuts the whole party down, like, instantly. But there was, like, a group of bitches that, like, wouldn't leave because they heard Boosie was coming. They're like, no, I gotta be fanned out and shit so I thought you know probably probably gonna be cat he would just be amping you know mm -hmm. it's just they just saying that and then all of a sudden shit Boosie pulled up he had some other per people with him too that he like besides my guys which was you know it mm -hmm. shout out Doty you know? um, but he he did the other feature first which was on, wasn't my beat and then like that I just engineered it and then like I don't know, like, the people that were getting the feature, like, they, I don't know if they thought, like, they were going to, like, record the whole song and just, like, be vibed out and shit like that, but, like, they weren't paying. They're not the ones that, like, booked the session or nothing like that, mm -hmm. so, like, I, like, got them out of there and was like, shit, y'all can go record your shit over next door or something, but I got to do this other feature or whatever. So I did their feature, and I ended up just playing, like, two, three beats or something like that, and I think he hopped on, like, the third beat. And he, it was actually a crazy moment because he, like, he was like animated about it, like he was kind of geeked up. It was a good, it was a good song. You know it was, but like when I played the beat, it was kind of like the exact reaction you want when you play a beat for Boosie. Like you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Like he got up out of his chair and like, who made this? You know what I'm saying? I'm like, mm -hmm. shit, I made this, and he's like, oh, run that shit back, put that shit on. Mm -hmm. He's like, okay, yeah, no, that's what's up. Like, that should feel good, you know? Mm -hmm. That's a good one. I'm trying to think. What's that song called again? I know how it goes. Snow, snow money. Is it snow money? Because I know it goes Minnesota. I got Minnesota snow money or something yeah, like that, right? Yeah, snow money. Pop my shit in it, yeah. in it, pop my shit. Yeah, that's called snow money. Yeah, Dutch Ruger and you know what boy saying featuring yeah. Lucy. Yeah, that's a fire song, and he makes Minnesota references in it, so I think yeah. that always helps. Like when uh, I guess a rapper's coming in from a different city and they do a feature with an artist from Minnesota that they actually like say something about Minnesota in it. Cause then it kind of just sheds a light on the city and like, oh damn, this might be like the next artist out of Minnesota or like what else is all going on out there. Um, you actually did a, a tape with ASAP Ant and mm -hmm. it was called like hours in 24, 24 hours, hours in Minnesota, Minnesota, right? I didn't know if it was 24 or 48. Yeah, we um, did. We, he came in, we, we did a few songs and then he just like put out a couple of them on a little EP or whatever with his DJ put it out. It wasn't like even put out through him, but it was him, you know. So it was like it was all it, is it wasn't all. like nothing like streaming numbers wise. That was gonna go crazy, but but it's still like a cool moment, I guess, for Minnesota. Like, yeah, in it, theory, I mean, ASAP Ant is obviously like super underground. Like was, when it comes it was down also to the like first time I like really locked in with like a celebrity. Mm -hmm. Like uh, I had I had already done like a couple of work. Like I did the cowboy placement. Mm -hmm. I did like um, some shit like Paco got a couple unreleased verses from a couple of famous people that people probably don't even know who they are now mm -hmm. but like young simmy did we got a song with him stuff like that like it was like there was people that i was meeting and stuff but like i was actually able to lock in with him like mm -hmm. you know like phone numbers follow each other mm -hmm. he, re he reposted my song one of my songs and i started dropping shit you know so it's like if i text him he gonna answer me like shit like that like and we and i ain't even seen him in a couple i'm a years. big fan of asap and I think his music's super tough. He, I mean, he's a very underground type of rapper. He's like an underground like, legend. Yeah, definitely. Um, along the way, you guys actually had a rap group out of, like, everyone, like your, your clique, like the modern-day hippies. Yeah. It was like Ute, Paco, Schizo, Swavy. Swavy. Yeah, that was, was that the it? group. Yeah, I know what I'm doing. I got well, my Originally, too, we had our other, we had a host, too, like a hype man. Um, Not young GC. Moody yet. <laughs> it wasn't Moody wasn't there yet. Yeah, no, he's my boy GC. I gotta say shout out GC, RIP mm -hmm. GC. RIP. We lost him in 2018, like right before like the group started to get like real serious. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? We're touring. Yeah. Booked Cause stuff. you guys were doing like South by Southwest, right? Yeah, that and was really like with like the first like yeah. He put big push about the like we're a group. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? It was South by Southwest because it was like how are we gonna get 
everybody an opportunity. Mm -hmm. And were you, you were like doing all the engineering and producing and DJing, for the most part? Yeah. And then, yeah, DJing as well. Yeah. So that's, yeah, that's cool. I, I mean, everyone really rapping at that time. I took yeah. a break from rapping for like five years. To really just, I mean, just because everyone, was, yeah, because I feel like, if, I mean, if you kind of got humbled when you I gotta, came around, you know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, and you Honestly, gotta, I was trash. Called? If you're really good at something too in this industry, sometimes you just gotta focus on that one thing you're really good at, or in your case, you know, you can engineer and produce mm -hmm. and even shoot videos. So that's, you know, three things, but it's all kind of in that same realm of like behind the scenes work of like, like, I don't know, like, even me, like, I'm, like, I like being behind the scenes besides when I take like little promo videos yeah, on course, the gram. Yeah. It's like, I like doing the behind the scenes work. I'm not the, the rapper. I'm not the I star. Do the, I not, do the like, real the, dirty work. Yeah, I like, comes down to. yeah. That's there's there's the artists that get the pretty, they do the, you know what I'm saying? Pretty mm -hmm. get their makeup done and do the, that, that kind of work. Mm -hmm. I'm the one that's doing the shit, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? But no, yeah, MDH was one of the first, like, groups or, you know, group of people, even even individually, that I ever heard of in Minnesota, besides um, some other people that were, like, really popping back then around, like, your guys' is like, you know, that 2017, 18, 19 time of, like, Tarzan and Westside Kobe and, like, the ZR Lomos yeah. and Vos and, like, just a bunch of, like, whoever basically was popping on Minnesota Cold free TV was, like, free yep, free Wi-Fi. Wi and, like, I knew all these names. I didn't know them at all or, like, yeah. anything about them or nothing. I just knew the names off of just, like, Minnesota Cold TV or, like, what the whatever, OGs, yeah, are, what, like, the OGs are talking about yeah. on the whatever. Um, so I know one... One that you've definitely worked with, I feel like, kind of like as your duo is like Tay. Like yeah. you and Tay are definitely like I mean, a duo. He brought me into he brought me into the Red Sea, mm -hmm. and like I said, the first six months of me being at the Red Sea was me just working with Tay. Yeah, I was just getting out. Like I was still in school, so it was like we were like, and we worked on like his very first project, like within that time, you know. Mm -hmm. After that, it was just kind of like we're locked in, and then I started to get like good at making beats, like like really good at making beats, like. Uh, so uh, like probably like 2017 that's when I started to be like okay I can make singles like snapping my fingers not, mm -hmm. you know so that's when we, I think the first single we put out with him on my beat was Gelato if you turn to taste on Gelato mm -hmm. yeah so that's an oldie yeah that was the very first beat like that was the first single that we put out like that and pretty much after that it was like everything we're putting out is going to be a single it's mm -hmm. got to top that it's got to you know yeah, no, you've definitely been, like, because, like, Tay Supreme is obviously, like, one of the more prominent names in the city of Minneapolis when it comes to, you know, who's performing, who's doing stuff in the clubs, yeah. or, like, just, like, a name that's been ringing a bell. He's, he's, he's got it. He's earned it, you know, I'll say yeah. that. Yeah. And he didn't put the work in. A lot of people ain't. Yeah. And, you know, like, it comes with, you know, you guys as a group, like, doing the tours, doing, like, extra shows, doing the extra work that a lot of people don't do that gets you that type of recognition. Exactly. Yeah, like, a lot of people think, like, like they don't, when they see Tay, they don't, like, it, it's like me and a Tay is, like, a kind of, like, a duo at this point. Like, you see that, like, you don't mm -hmm. really see Tay much unless maybe it's, like, at the club, which I'm, I'm not, like, a club guy, you know, yeah. so it's, like... Yeah, I'm not either. I used to be. I, I enjoy going out every once in a while, but I, I'm not a drinker, so it's not yeah, that fun. I like to either. Yeah, because it's like you can smoke in the club, but then everyone like around you is... just like overly fried. But then, yeah, and everyone around you is like just super hyped up and you're just like chilled out and it's just weird. And for me, if I smoke and I'm around that many people and lights and loud music, I'm just like, everything is peaking. Like, it's just like, I'm way too, like, yeah, I'm way too way fried too at that right point. <laughs> I can't even have conversations. I got to scream. I'm tired. Lungs are tired from smoking. Can't be yeah, screaming no. in the club. It's... But if I, I don't, I don't knock anyone that got business. I like going in the club, out just though. to kind of like show my face. Or like, like celebrate something. Celebrate, yeah. Get like, invited to someone's birthday. Yeah, or like, like that. That's about. Get like a section for cele like celebrating an accomplishment. On my birthday or something. I might get a table or something. Yeah. yeah. Work out a deal with the with the club. Promote it. Shit like that. Shit like that yeah. Do like a album release party. Like there's there's reasons to do it, but. But it's really like like it was building that chemistry. I I learned young. That you really do gotta lock in with an artist mm -hmm. as a producer, because there's like there's two types of producers. It's a producers that chase placements, and there's nothing wrong with that. Mm -hmm. There's just two types of producers that say chase the placements that they're making beats. They're sending out to all all these emails and da da da, just praying that they get a placement. And yeah. They they hear it and they're like, oh, I produced for so and so, but they don't even know like they didn't get an old type of relationship out of it. It's just yeah. the, me. I'm more, and then there's the, the artists like the. That they broke some, or the producers that they break an artist. Mm -hmm. Like you think of Drake and Forty, you think of Metro and Future, you think of, I can name, you know what I'm saying, a million mm -hmm. duos, Yeet and Benny X. You can think mm -hmm. of, I don't know, I could just go crazy on naming that. But they, yeah. they have the those producers, 
that broke somebody have longevity. Yeah, like a, Pierre and Cardi even. Exactly. Pierre made his own career out of it too, which kind of gets you, I guess, like... Versus the chasing placement ones, they're yeah. still chasing placements. And yeah, and just trying, you know, they, they're banking on the next collab rather exactly. than like... Versus like, like me calling someone. the artist and being like, let's lock in. Yeah. Like me and Tay, like that'd be like me and Tay, Tay goes... Like if you chase enough like, placements and one of them catches you and you stick with them along the way then like i feel like that's like that's different the w like that's like a w right yeah. there like that's what you that's should locking in that's how you're supposed to you're supposed that should to be, be your goal if you're a placement right chaser you know if you get a pla if you get a hit song with somebody why would you not keep working with them mm -hmm. and i feel like that kind of puts you in like your new position for where you're at now in your career like you know you kind of solidified yourself being with tay and you know like we didn't you know we talked about it a little bit but you really have engineered probably one of the, you probably engineered the most people out of anyone in minnesota to an ex at least in the time frame you've been at the Trap City Studios. Yeah, probably at least you know like what I mean? in the like, last 10 years. Not probably, to take yeah. away from any of the OGs that have been doing it for 20 years, let's yeah. say, you know, like like the Jay Estates of the world yeah. or. Um, me and Jay actually started you know, the like same the, time. Jay started engineering the same time as me. Okay. The, same, the same time that he got the, his studio the same year that I came around. Yeah. And who knows, like, even like, like people tech, I don't like even know, you know. People like. I could, I, there's probably you know, a ton of people I don't even know, like, I'm not even Like, people I'm just not, like, you know, I just don't pop the top of my head that have probably, you know, also, you know, put in the work too, not to take away from them, but you've, like, you've kind of branded yourself. Everyone knows who you are for what you do, and now you're starting to release rap music again. Mm -hmm. And, you know, like, for, at least for someone like me, I wasn't around in 2014 to 20, you know, 17 of your career. I didn't know you rap before this. Yeah. So it's like, to me, all this is fresh. It's new. It's like a new thing. Mm -hmm. Kind of like how you're saying, like, Pierre Bourne branching off from Playboy Cardi. Yeah. And I, I don't know if we'll see Benny X dropping music or what his life was like outside of producing or anything like that. But, yeah. It's um, like, me and Tay are always going to still be locked in. Yeah. Doing what we do. It's just like, I started, it was really the pandemic that made me, like, start rapping again. Because you could work with less people, basically, and yeah, you I was, just I was needed some people, someone booked. to hop on. I was getting less booked than normal, so it's like I got a lot of free time. Yeah, someone has to hop on these beats. And I'm just like, <laughs> fuck it, I'm just bored. And I got, like, like really what took me, I took the main break off of, like, rapping in that, that four or five year span was I needed to experience life. Mm -hmm. I need to live more life. Yeah. I needed to travel. I needed to see more things. To just have things to talk about. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Versus just like me being in school and mm -hmm. being broke growing up. And, and yeah. you know what I'm saying? Nobody want to hear and, that shit. And just really. cap rapping. Yeah. <laughs> but now but, you can actually rap about shit that you've done or that you've experienced, or you can see, and you can even see the blueprint that's maybe been in front of you. Of what's exactly. worked for some people, what hasn't worked for others, how people have grown. I, like, I was a sponge mm -hmm. when I came in. That's why I was. That's why everybody kind of liked me for a while like ak was like weary of me but he you know what yeah. i'm saying like i was sponge so like i learned everything i took yeah. in everything yeah i, I mean yeah someone could, like so. ak he's an o like, you know he's an og of ogs so it's like you gotta he has no reason to just you know randomly just trust some new kid that no. just walks in or you no. build that and trust. i was young as hell so yeah. it was like i was freshly 18 like i wouldn't have trusted mm -hmm. like, a freshly 18 year old like me being me yeah. now and i'm like oh a new intern or something like, yeah i'm gonna be like no yeah so yeah, you can't knock him for that. But here now you're in like this new era of your career. Um, when did you? How long has it been exactly since you've released your first single? Like back? Has it been two years yet? Is it like a year and a half? A year? a year. It's only been a year since like October fourteenth. Because what was first? Was it? Two. It was Step On Him was first, right? It was first. When did that come out? I mean, really, I dropped a single in like twenty twenty, but uh -huh. like I never promoted. What was that one called? It's I feel called like Ten Toes with P Will. It's out on all platforms. And I stuff. think I might have. I think. But I, I just dropped one. it, and like I didn't even like make a post or nothing saying I was dropping. I probably it. I at least seen it like when, just... like 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 if you like posted it like the day you dropped or something. I might yeah. have seen it, but. But no, yeah. So that was like in 2020. I just dropped that. Okay. Because that was kind of the song that like I found my sound on. Mm -hmm. And then like after that, I was like, okay, this is like my sound. I'm gonna keep rolling with it. Mm -hmm. And then 2022, right after tour, mm -hmm. October 14th, that was the day I dropped my first single. So. Yeah, just about 365, a little over 365. Yeah. Um, I was in the hospital. When you dropped it? Yes. Why do I, I feel like I remember that. I had a collapsed lung. Yeah. I was in the hospital dancing and shit, making TikToks. Yeah, I remember that. Or That's oxygen what I remember. Tank on. <laughs> I do remember those videos now. But how is, okay, so how has been this past year, like, becoming an artist now, trying to, you know, like, maybe get a step into the spotlight a little bit of, like, yeah, who no, you are and what you do? It's forced me to become a lot more extroverted 
mm -hmm. less Cause when, to myself. I think the first like four or five times I met you, you didn't say a word. Yeah, I'm, I'm usually, you know? I mean, I'm quiet. I and now really you're, like, you know, you're a rapper releasing music. You kind of have to be. You got to market yourself, yeah. and I can't just be quiet all the time. And and on top of that, like, like I said, when you met me, I was still in my learning phase. Like, mm -hmm. you know, I'm, I was a sponge. Yeah. Now I feel like um, I'm like Anakin <laughs> after when he thinks he's too big for. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Right before he went to the dark side. Mm -hmm. No, I'm just kidding. But I'm not going to say that. But you know what I'm going saying? Going to the like, dark I'm, side? I'm not a... Uh, you selling your soul for the family? I'm not the little... I'm not the little... Little shrimp no more. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm... I got yeah. experience. I got knowledge that I can mentor people now and shit like that. Like, mm -hmm. like I do... I have people that I mentor. And yeah. That I teach them how to do their shit. And I got college degrees and shit like that. You know, like... So it's just, I don't know, it comes down to... Have you enjoyed, like, I guess, rapping in the past year? Like, have you act, like has it been, like, more fun than anything for you? Or is it, like, have you been stressed it's, out about it? Like, how's, really, how's the vibe? Like, I'd been? say, like, the only thing that, like, stresses you out about it is, like, you kind of realize, like, who supports you for you or for real. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, like sometimes people, like, you'd be, like, you expect, like, to support you because you support them or you work to them or whatever they just might not and you kind of like i don't understand like why there's a lot of bitter artists yeah That's i feel like a lot of people but i'm kind of blessed like people I, I i took the time i feel like to perfect the music part mm -hmm. before releasing which a lot of people don't yeah you definitely have your anything. sound like i can tell like like you, you found your sound. It's not like you just started rapping and like, and it doesn't like flow right. At mm -hmm. least like, that's just that, that's your sound. There's a lot of people that you know they have to go through you know twenty, thirty songs until they one find the right engineer for them or the the right pitch correction, exactly. whatever it may be. Um, but you obviously like you've been doing that for years to figure out how to do it for other people. So I'm sure it didn't. Yeah, take. I was just kind of like I said, I was a sponge. I learned. I took notes from mm -hmm. everybody's shit, engineering everybody like. I just kind of peeped. Oh, that kind of worked for them. Da, 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 mm -hmm. da, da, da. And I'm just like, oh well, shit, this is. Plus, like, I was, I was helping a lot of people like write their songs, like mm -hmm. write write a few bars or their shit, or give them the concept, write their hook or mm -hmm. whatever. So it was just kind of like, all right, fuck it. I already be doing this shit. I know I can write. I know I can do this shit. I know I can sing a little bit. I be help, helping singers figure out the right notes to sing. So I'm like, all right, fuck it. Let me just. Let me try this shit. I got some hard beats that I made. I'm gonna try this shit. Mm -hmm. and, you know, it was just—it's just a lot of fun. I really just started doing it more of like a for myself and stuff, and then people really started like asking me to like drop music because they they like the song and shit. Yeah, and, and you never know what kind of opportunities it may bring. You know, like someone might hear your song and be wondering like who produced this, mm -hmm. and they were like, oh, it's, it was him. Like, and he rapped on it, and he produced it, so that means he can write music and he can produce. Oh, like. I could bring him, you know, I could use him on my team exactly. or whatever. Like I just, I know, like, you know. the first two singles I dropped, which was a Step On Him and Sneaky Link, I dropped, like, a couple of months after. I pretty, My mm -hmm. whole year was pretty calculated on how I dropped everything. It was pretty strategic, and it was more of a... I ended up getting so busy during the summer, like, booked, mm -hmm. doing sessions, that it kind of took away from my artistry a little yeah. bit. But other than that, like, everything's been very strategic. So like 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 for the first two singles I dropped like I've I've showed my music to a lot of people other people like AK will show people the music to like A, a and R's executives stuff like that yeah and I've never once heard anybody like not like my songs you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying like if if even if you play a hundred songs for them if you play them two songs like they're gonna like them I promise you like whether it's one of them or both of them like. It's them. That's why I put them out first. And yeah. I, mean, I have five hundred songs that I could have put out other than them. Yeah. But I put them two songs out first. And your most recent one is it? Bu is Bussin. Bussin was my most recent single. Okay. And I did put out like a small EP. Mm hmm Two, but that was really for my real fans. Yeah. Because yeah. I yeah definitely like to get noticed nowadays. It's like definitely singles is the way. Yeah, to go. definitely. Like, when it comes to like, so, like really I'm, like I'm expanding the singles. That's why I wasn't really like going overly crazy with the like putting like money behind promoting my mm -hmm. EP. It was more of a yeah. if once you find if one of these singles catches your attention, here's some more to dive here's into. Here's some more just yeah. to like s literally spend your hours listening to. Mm -hmm. I started seeing people like my friend, really what it was, I seen P Will. Somebody posted P Will um it was last year like the Spotify wrapped and they like 
their artists, their top three artists was like Lil Baby, P. Will, and Lil Dirk or somebody like that. And I'm just like, mm-hmm. and it was like hour, like a lot of hours streamed. Listen yeah. to it. I can't remember the exact number, but it was like a lot of hours. And I'm just like, damn, bro, like how the fuck do you get somebody to spend that much time listening to you? You know what I'm saying? I'm like, okay. He's got a lot of music out. He's got multiple different projects. He's got even somebody like Yeet, for example. Someone catching his 25 song projects and and shit like that. And he puts out a couple a year and shit like that. So it's like you have ton of a ton of music to just dive into, mm-hmm. get lost into. Like that's how I got in. That's how I became a Yeet fan. Was on tour, like tr- driving on the road, just going. Just so many to his album, and it goes for like fucking the five hours I'm driving. His whole album is playing. I'm like, oh shit, that was kind of fire. Like you mm-hmm. know, like and. That's what it is. Like that's so I was like, I gotta put out a project, something, so I can be somebody's top listener. Mm-hmm. Exactly. That was pretty much that. that's all. That's all the reason I put out. People was telling me like, oh, you probably shouldn't put out an EP. Yeah, but just, just so you can. Yeah. Single. But I'm like, two songs isn't enough for you to fall in love with me. It, I think it doesn't hurt to put it out if like you're if like you're well aware or like that it's it's probably not gonna be the thing that blows you up. Like if it's, you're just like, yeah, I'm, I'm content with it just being like some of my discovery of like, just you can find me here. Like, or like you can hear more mm-hmm. of me if you want, right? It here, was like, more of like, like them first, like I said, Sneaky Link and Step On were singles. I made them to be singles. Yeah. The other ones were more of like me just like being my more comfortable self mm-hmm. and like just making them kind of the music I want to make all the time. Like if it was just like me going in there, like that's what I would like normally yeah. make. You know, what well, I'm you definitely did a good job promoting a lot of them too. Cause I, I mean, I, I, I just ran. You know, like you just randomly have songs stuck in your head. I, I have like the Balenciaga feet. I had a stub one. Like I, that just runs through my head sometimes. Like just like, when I'm just like can't some get something out of my head. Go ahead. Um, and like I feel like Bussin's kind of like that way too. Yeah. Like the, one, the beat is crazy. Yeah, on no, Bussin. I, like I don't even know what beat. that that noise is that's in the background. Like when. When, the, when it hits, I don't even know what that's called. It's just like that rattle noise. Yeah, no. Like it's that shit's just like... Just it's, like a, it's, the way I, it's the way I mix the 808, that's it. Okay. Hey, I'm not... I'm not a... I'm, I'm not good at... Pro- I've never produced or engineered anything before, yeah, so no, I don't I know like any of that shit. I just mix it to make it sound like, you know, like... Um, like back in the day, like trunks when people put like 312 and subs in their trunk and you just yep. hear the shit rattling. That's what it reminds me of. I grew up in that era, so it's like... That was really what kind of made me like fall in love with like... That's why I like trap beats so much when they came mm-hmm. out because it was like you put that shit on the subs and that shit was just wanging. So you're like, mm-hmm. I right, bet. So all my beats, I try to make sure that they like mm-hmm. just abs- just slam. So it's like that's what I try. Your to beats make are good. Like. I know, like you were on, um, you did a lot of work on Kumo's album, producing and engineering. Yeah, I, I mixed mastered the whole thing. Mm-hmm. I produced probably like I, I want to say like close to half of it. Yeah, a couple of the songs that I like the most like were produced by you and. Even just like working with other people, I've heard JTC beats dab on like too many times, uh, not too many times, I guess, hopefully, but like a bunch of times. But I hear a bunch of it, like like you and YP Engineer, and those are the two tags I hear the most out of any engineer in the city. At least that's, like that's what's up. one shout out YP. Yeah, and I know yeah he he shouted you out on his episode too a while ago. Been doing but I think you two are like the, like two like ogs that have touched like some of the most people out here yeah is there any other like engineers i guess that you and producers that you've like kind of like seen over the years that you respect like their hustle and their grind or anything like that um, yeah there's 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 a lot of engineers that i really respect their work a lot mm-hmm. and there's a couple that i really really respect their hustle more than like anything like mm-hmm. jay state is the best hustling engineer i've seen mm-hmm. but i'd say me and him is like up there because I love him. People be booked. Mm-hmm. Always be doing something. Always be working. Mm-hmm. Always be trying to do something. So it's like most, some engineers just want to make music all the time. Mm-hmm. Some engineers want to make money all the time. There's, like, you know, it's different. And then there's some people like, I really respect their work. Like, Gora, I really like his work a lot. Mm, yeah, Gora is fire. I really like um, Gibby's work. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, Checkmate, Tech, Fuego. You know, like, definitely, I'm trying to think of more engineers. Like, I might just be playing Kim right now. But, like, I really like a lot. I, I, I try to learn from people. Like, if I do a, a session with somebody or something like that, like, or a collab, like, me and another producer collab, like, I might mm-hmm. pick up a way on how they mix their beat that utilize, I can take yeah. it. Right. I'll bet I could do that. Okay, sweet. And that's, like, and I'm the same way. Like, when I work with somebody, I'm always trying to share, like, 
hey, you know, if you do this, you could yeah, like, I, continue I to be a sponge. Shit. Nobody was doing that shit for me, really. So it's like I just, I'm always just an open book when it comes to that shit. Mm -hmm. Is there any uh, artist you've been working with that, like, I guess you want to show some love to before we get out of here, or like that you think I like, got a chance to make it or whatever? Yeah, I mean, I've been really, really locked in with um, NLU Skeet. Okay, we've been working since he like pretty much since you guys started hearing about him. Mm -hmm. We've been working, and he's got a lot coming. Uh, his whole camp, you know, the whole NLU camp, they all got a lot of shit going mm -hmm. on. Obviously, you know it. Working with you know it. Kumo, Kari, Dutch, Rosane. You know, me and Tay got so a whole lot more shit like, in the vault. I got a whole bunch of music like about to drop. I've been working with my boy from L.A., Johnny Knox. He's here with me right now. Um, we're getting ready to drop like his first like real single, like real push. He's kind of... Uh, it's kind of took the step back like how I did and just kind of focused on like making the quality music so that way when we put it out we can put it out the right way so that's going to be like a crazy project I produced the whole thing like it was all done like we I was flying out to LA he was flying out here it was like it was just like it was a lot of a fun process mm -hmm. um, I'm trying to think what else there's, I don't know, I have a lot of really consistent artists, but, like, those are probably the ones that I'm, like, most locked in. most consistently, like, working towards making sure that they make it, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Like, there's some artists that, like, I'm definitely going to help them, but, like, there's other artists where, like, yeah. I'm going to stick my neck out for it. I mean, it's good. I mean, you can't help it. You can't, you can't put the same energy no. into everybody. There's not, there's not that much time and energy in the day. <laughs> it's, I'm, I'm willing to work with the hardest working people. Yeah. So it's, like, because this shit takes so much work like, mm -hmm. to actually get on people don't even realize that they think that they can just make a song and blow up the next day they don't yeah. know anything about no, it's marketing a, it's a long process for sure yeah but i mean it's always good catching up with you you too bro it's always good to have you on the channel thanks uh, for having me yeah of course uh you can follow him at jtc beats go stream his music go buy a beat go copyright a beat off his youtube and freestyle <laughs> on it and upload it i don't do actually something. upload anything online i know i feel like that's one thing i don't see you doing is like uploading tight beats to youtube no, or anything because like i want i want everything is there a reason why you have never done that um, or like you don't do that i guess they're basically i didn't got kind of somewhat like played out of some placements before mm. like with the major label but they they did some ho ass Weird ass shit. Or like took one of your beats, you uploaded to YouTube and or used no, it, like or the songs I didn't upload. It's just really like, I, I it's the reason I don't send beats out. It's the mm -hmm. reason I don't like realistically. If you want to work with me, lock in. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, session. fuck yourself. Mm -hmm. And that's like that paper talk. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Unless you got send that deposit, then I'll send you some shit. Yeah. Other than that like. Just, yeah, no, I don't know. I just, I got trust issues, so I don't really yeah. want anybody to even get the chance to steal my shit. Yeah, I feel that. So the amount of people that rip YouTube beats into my sessions and shit, like, mm -hmm. I'm not trying to be that producer. Yeah. Yeah, I feel that. I get it. Um, but yeah, if the Waterway Studios is booked, go book with him. Go book with Trust City. Trust City yeah. com. <laughs> You know um, Go buy, go buy him. some beats. Get that shit. Watch that video. Go sure watch all his shit. I do all my own videos, shit, too, me and... I mean, I'll have, like, somebody help, but mm -hmm. Jeb, me and Jeb being locked in. Mm -hmm. But, you know, we've been collabing, doing the editing and all that kind of shit together. Got another video, single coming soon, before the end of the year. Hopefully another... I mean, like, I'm, I got so much music, I just want to keep flooding y'all, but I don't really want to, like, saturate it. No, I feel like sometimes it's like you can't... You can do a little too much, but you can also... You also want to just be consistent, but there's like a lot of things you can do besides dropping music, like you know, just really pushing what you got going exactly. on, showing snippets like on the gram, exactly, just yeah. being a real creator, content creator on top of the music. But I'm trying to le learn yeah. how to be like balance it out without being like busy, like in the other like, because in the studio, like as an engineer and a producer, it's like so yeah, I'm hard sure it's a hard be, balance. Like, like people that's how I feel trying to edit like videos and work in a sneaker like store. That, so it's like, you know, I gotta work in a sneaker store and check people out and buy shoes, but also try to edit the vlog I want to drop tomorrow. Like, it's just impossible. I can't imagine doing, you know, that as well. Yeah. But go shop with us at one five two one Como Avenue, Southeast Minneapolis, Minnesota. Go follow us at Waterwave TV at shout Waterwave MPLS. Waterwave, shout out JTC Beats. Shout out to the Trap City Studios. Shout out to AK. Shout out Tay. Shout out the whole MDH. 
Man, shout out, fam. You know it. Shout out everyone that I've ever met at the Trap City Studios or a concert you've ever came to or seen at the Red Sea or met you or anything. Tony Snow's crew, all them. Shout out everyone. We out. Peace. Peace.